to another episode of Skin Interviews. We are in season two. My name is George Skinalis, and this guy here is Nathan Strong. Nathan Strong. What's going on, Nathan Strong? You're looking good. Look at you, George. You're looking good too. You know what? Your, your hair's starting to look really good. Well, you know, it was it wasn't always looking very good. There was a moment there where people were like, okay, what are you doing with your hair? But I've been getting a few messages. Actually, a guest from this season, Katarina Pagos, big shout out. You've always messaged me on my hair since we even posted one right before we got into the studio um, in front of our green screen saying, hey, Katarina, this hair is for you. Katarina, this hair is for you. Speaking of messages, do we have any messages from this today? It's been quiet. What? It's been quiet. Well, we, we took a week off. We did take a week off. I was away. Um, for those of you that don't know that I was in Edmonton, I was shooting a short film. I do some acting. It was a horror film. I'm not going to say if I died or not, but you're going to have to watch it when it comes out. But uh, I love how I plugged myself in there. That was like so smooth. So good. Are you going to be a superstar? Like, are you going to be leaving me? Wait, 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 wait. Are you going to be leaving me for Hollywood? Wait. Are you saying I'm not a superstar? This is what Romy Sable did (laughs) before a day. If you say I'm not a superstar, I'm going to go out and my co host is going to be Oprah Winfrey. And I worry about that because remember, I'm just the drummer. Nathan, uh, you are more than you're more than Michelle. You're Kelly. And then, buddy, I love you, man. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere without you. I can't live without you. You know, I can't live without you as well. Unless Vanessa calls me. Vanessa calls me. I'm out. Oh no. Oh yeah, that was it. That was a shout out right there to our girl. All right, so it's been quiet this week. We only got one message saying, you guys are amazing. Keep going, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and we look forward to those messages. We look forward to the comments. So where do you find us? You find us on at skin.terviews or on Facebook and LinkedIn, Skin Interviews by Nathan and George. And Skin Interviews by Nathan and George is here today in Season 2 by the amazing sponsorship provided to us by Fullscript. And Fullscript is the ultimate platform. I'm going to say this every single episode to all you people get on it, okay? Fullscript is the ultimate platform for those who want to do wellness the right way, the personal way. It has the industry's most comprehensive catalog with over 300 plus quality professional products making safe supplements because they need to be safe, more accessible, and more affordable. There's no more guessing game. It is your doctor prescribing supplementation directly to you. And if your doctor doesn't have it, what I'd be questioning is how much knowledge they have on it. Maybe they don't feel comfortable about it. And this is where you got to ask them about it because I want my doctor to tell me what I need to take. I don't want to guess down the aisle of your local drug mart, okay? My doctor, who's probably on today's episode backstage, is like, whoa, George, you're shitting on all the doctors right now. Yes. (laughs) Yes, I am. Because I want to know what my doctor prescribed. And for those doctors that are already on this, you can already, and you've been already ordering your wholesale products. Now, Full Scripts got all the products on there that you can order wholesale directly to your clinic. Great? Great. Great. Should I pull out my notes on today's guest? Yes, I think you should. Yes. I'm, I'm excited for tonight. So, I really like today's guy. I've actually been working with him for a few years uh, through a bunch of different companies. So, I'm very excited that he's here. Um, Really, really wonderful human being. But let me read directly from his bio so I don't screw it up and make it all about me, which I'm really good at. (laughs) This doctor is a board-certified dermatologist both in Canada and the United States. He, He is an assistant clinical professor for the Department of Medicine at McMaster University and an active member of many professional associations, including the following, and not all of them, but these are some of them, Canadian Dermatology Association, American Dermatology, uh, American Academy of Dermatology, sorry, American Society of Dermatological Surgery, American Society of Laser Medicine and Surgery, and the Canadian Laser Aesthetic Specialist Society, also known as CLASS, where he serves as the vice president. I'm going to throw it in here that he just got married, so I don't know how he's sitting on all these boards and his wife <laughs> is allowing it. <laughs> okay, because I'm, I'm in trouble just for skin reviews, so... Yeah. He has opened up his clinic in Hamilton, um, and it is called Doctor's Skin Care. And since opening, he has won four top three dermatologist choices by the best rated Certificate of Excellence, 
both in 2020, 2019, 2017. He's also won four top Reader's Choice Awards and two Consumer's Choice Awards. This guy is exceptional. He's one of the best. He's leading in his field. He's got incredible skin. Um, above all, what you're going to learn today as a guest is that he's an amazing human being and he's young and he's got a massive career ahead of him with so many accomplishments already. I can't wait for you all to meet tonight. Dr. Raul Shukla. The legend. Hey. <laughs> you guys are the legends. Congrats to you guys. And what an intro. Like, <laughs> very flattering. Thank you. But listen, this it can't be flattering. It's listed. These are factual things. Yeah. And, well, like, I mean, I've been lucky. Let's just say that. Like, let's pretend this is a mic. It's mic drop. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, <laughs> it's some good thank stuff, man. Congrats. Well, thank, you. thank you so much. So, George, we go way back. I mean, you have being the legend as well and Nathan we got to net, met you, meet you recently and I think he's definitely more than a drummer uh, <laughs> yeah yeah he's, he's Kelly uh, he's Kelly he's Kelly but there's only one Beyonce in this group so <laughs> yeah, on the screen for sure but, but you're like a, you're like a quiet achiever mate you just go out there and, and get stuff done it's it's impressive you know, I just stay below the radar, kind of just do my thing and just try to do what you guys are doing here. Like you guys came, I mean, when did this start? This started a few months ago and it's just swollen into this massive thing. So congrats to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of it. Oh, no, it's, it's an honor. You guys have some legends on here. I, I don't think I'm a legend here. I'm, you know, more of the jester. And then you guys had some huge people on here. So like, thanks for having me. Well, listen. Wait, 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 wait. We got it. We got to define that. If you define huge by by following or status of being known, yeah, we've had a few really big names. But as far as intelligence, um, the field that you guys work in and stuff, mm -hmm. you're, don't don't kid yourself. You're no jester. You're right up there. You're at yeah. royal court, buddy. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that because today's interview is not about, you know, kissing your butt. It's about, <laughs> you know, it's about getting to know you. Yep. Uh, interviews would like to congratulate you because you are a freshly married man. Yes. Thank you. Three you guys, you veterans. You guys are veterans. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have tips, um, let me know. Uh, uh, first thing okay. is, is get off one of those that many boards <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm working on balance that's for sure yeah, yeah. and only allowed one skit review a year because it's in the evenings <laughs> uh, Fair enough. and you've become a dog dad oh yeah N anala is the name of the dog uh, she she's our, our new our first daughter she, she's, she's amazing that's i mean right. i know nathan you have one on the way two already Yes, yeah. I mean, I, it's obviously not a, a, a human, but to us it is. Oh, sure no. You know the same. Yeah. But listen, my dog is literally sitting right down here next to me. She will not move until I'm done my skin interviews, and then we go inside, and she gets all the kisses and treats in the world. <laughs> <laughs> There's been episodes there where she's literally on my leg, and she's pawing me like this. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> And there's somewhere I actually have to pick her up. I don't have a choice, or she'll start whimpering. So she may end up in the show today. We don't okay. know. But before she gets into it and ruins it, let's go right to the beginning of your life. Sure. Enter this world. You take your first breath. Your parents decide to name you. Was it always Raul Shukla? Is there a middle name? And is there any meaning to your name? So my mom wanted to name me Ricky. Okay. I don't know where I come. Maybe she watched a lot of soaps. Um, I, feel like, I feel like my dad didn't think that was ethnic enough. Um, I mean, clearly I'm not, uh, I mean, maybe I could pass as a Ricky, um, but it didn't fly for him. So they settled on my name and actually it's kind of a big ask for me because it's this, it's Buddha's son's name. So, wow. so I don't know, actually, I don't know what Buddha's son is up to. But it's probably pretty something pretty good. 
Um, <laughs> um, in, in India, it's a very common name. Um, I would say it's like a Nathan or a George there. Yeah. Really. Is Nathan a common name? Um, you know, maybe the Christian part of India, I think, is yeah. really common. Really? There's a lot of people named Nathan. I, and honestly, I just, I, I would assume uh, <laughs> in certain areas, but I don't really know. Honestly, I think I, I want to see the clinical trial on people <laughs> named Nathan. <laughs> um, and now, not the part where my parents are from, but um, yeah, it went from Ricky to this. And that's, that's, where I'm at. that's where I'm at. Is there a middle name? No middle name. And are you an only child? Middle. Middle child. Yeah. So I, think, I think you're a middle, Nathan. Yeah. I'm the oldest. I'm oldest. the youngest, actually. Oh, way off. So I yeah, am middle. Yeah, middle. Wow. Um, who was mom and dad's favorite growing up out of the three? I think to my face, me. Um, <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think to date, it, it was, I think I've caused the least problems over life. But, I mean, it's very biased. What are they going to say to your face? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what they say to you guys. I mean, at the time. No, well, my, my, my parents were honest about it. Like, my sister was the, the golden child. I was I was the black sheep. <laughs> no. See what you got all right. <laughs> I tell, like, my friend's kids, if they have two kids, even my, my sister's kids, my nephews, like, I'll pull the one aside and I'll be like, yo, don't tell your brother because I can't stand him, but you're my favorite. And then I'll put the older one aside, and I'll be like, my God, I can't stand your brother. You're my favorite. So they, they go, but don't tell each other. They go on their whole lives unless they watch this. Um, they, <laughs> they're, each one is my favorite, and that I don't really like the other one. So they know how to, you know, they trust me, and they get all the great gifts for me. But uh, hey, a good strategy, for sure. It, it, it definitely works. It definitely works. Nathan, take it away. So as a kid, like growing up, where did you grow up, by the way? Uh, Sarnia. I don't know if you guys know where Sarnia in St. Catharines. Yeah. Um, I don't know, George. I know Nathan is in New Zealand. Yep. So I'm guessing you're not going to know uh, George, Toronto. Yep. So uh, Sarnia near London. A little. I was born there, raised in St. Catharines. It's a wine country. It's a good place. To, great place to grow up. How did you go from Sarnia to St. Catharines? Uh, parents essentially moved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a good place. I, I, a small up, uh, small towns, really nice people. Um, it, it was a great place to grow up. Great, great for families, I would say. Yeah. So, what did you guys do, like as a family? What do you remember that used to bring you together on the weekends? What was something cool you did? Uh, I would say movies. Really, movies yeah. brought together weekends. Um, that was really nice. Sports with my brother. Um, those are the two key things that stand out for me, really. And any sports in particular? My brother and I played everything. So I still play a lot of sports, uh, ice hockey, basketball, baseball. Uh, we were quite competitive. Uh, we had table tennis, pool, like everything. So he, he's about seven years older than me, but he showed me the ropes. And then once I got to the level that was half decent, we would compete. Yeah, yeah it was good. It was, a, it was a good way to grow up. He was a great brother to me. Awesome. And and birthdays. Is there a birthday in particular that you remember growing up? I, I wouldn't. There was no standouts, but um, I'd say McDonald's, that uh, party room, that was probably was the thing that stood out to me. I think my parents knew I liked it. It was. I mean, I don't have kids. Um, you do, Nathan. I think it's a very easy thing to do for a parent because you just dump them there. But I liked it. <laughs> You know what? You're not the first guest who's mentioned the McDonald's party rooms, but I don't know if they have them anymore. They do. I, I think they're pretty not. I think they're pretty unhygienic. Yeah, yeah. they are unhygienic, but they're, yeah. still, they're still there. They're still available. Okay. Like the playpen. I think they're the playpen. Yeah, playpen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, usually that's closed every week because there's something that happens in there. <laughs> yeah. But kids' birthdays these year, like they cost a lot of money. Yeah. Right? Like, and these parents are going all out. They're, like, having, like, $10,000 birthday parties for their two-year-old. Like, It's a little bit much, I think. Yeah, yeah I, I think it is as well, yeah. Like, go get some Botox. Chill. <laughs> 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 so, gr growing up, what do you think was the most important lesson your parents taught you and your, your, your family? So, 
I, so my parents came, my, my dad initially came here with almost like very little. It's like a pretty classic Im- immigrant story. He came here in the 60s, late 60s, in Saskatchewan, actually. Uh, this is a man who's not used to winter. Uh, so oh. Interesting choice uh, for someone to come here. Uh, but I, I think what he's instilled in is to have an attitude of gratitude. Uh, you know, life throws you lemons sometimes, but things are overall, there's a lot more to be thankful for than to be upset about. I mean, especially during COVID, I mean, you can be grateful for certain things and try to take the positive and just move with it. So that has been something that's been instilled with me. If I have a tough day, I mean, overall, I'm, I feel like I'm in a very fortunate position. I'd be fortunate to meet a lot of great people. Um, so it's, an, it's, a, it's a balance and I try to keep that in perspective. Growing up, uh, you know, growing up in a smaller community, sometimes I find you make these these incredible friendships that last forever. Mm-hmm. Tell me about, you know, one of your young best friends that maybe you don't talk today anymore because life does that. Yeah. Tell me about one of your young best friends and where they are today. So there's about three guys. Actually, we still maintain contact. Um uh, one, there's a gentleman, Kyle, he's an investment banker downtown Toronto, Will count in Toronto and uh, one of my good friends Jay's a cop and uh, around Hamilton so we will make like it's hard so it's like as you guys know you can't really see each other that much but we will during COVID Zoom we meet, we keep contact with each other just to keep up with each other's lives I mean they're super influential on me um, and hopefully I was a little bit on them and it's been great to just stay in contact with them they've been great guys throughout my life do they come see you for their for their skincare needs? Have they yeah, jumped whatever, whatever they need? Um, how embarrassing, <laughs> whatever embarrassing issues that's come up to to kind of less um, less embarrassing. But yeah, I, I see them for everything. Good. What I want to know then, and we ask this of all our guests, so I hope you came prepared because I know you do your <laughs> research. You're not you're not anybody yeah. that came today without knowing having yourself prepared. I want an embarrassing story. From me? <laughs> uh, there's so many, actually. Um, a good one, though. Like, I want one that's going to – like, I want to lose sponsorship over it. Come on. <laughs> Give it to no, me. Guys, we guys we have to work together still. So, I mean, <laughs> we can't do that. Um, I mean, I guess – I don't know if it's embarrassing, but uh, maybe surprising. So and I went to some Daytona Beach, and, uh, Daytona Beach, one of these spring break things, breakaway tours. I don't know if you remember that, George. Uh, um, why don't you take a bus there? Wow. And I, um, I entered a beer chugging contest. Wow. <laughs> this now we're talking. 17. I, I think I was 17 or 18. I can't remember. Um, and I went against some heavy, like, football team, like, just big, burly guys. And, like. I mean, I'm not a big burly guy, and it was I. It was I don't know if it was embarrassing, but I feel I crushed them all. Whoa! Beer chugging. So I feel like Nathan. You you could probably. Uh, I think I feel like Nathan can hold his own. I don't know why George. I don't think you can, but <laughs> I feel like Nathan is. A, a I mean, I think he's a kiwi in you. I don't know. Well, that's because you saw me in Mexico as well. Yeah, actually, that is correct. <laughs> just so, just so we're clear, that was embarrassing for the guys that lost. So, oh, you're, wow. you're, I need a better story. That's one, but number two, <laughs> I can I can drink Nathan under the table. The problem with Nathan and I is oh. we have a difference in age. Nathan is up two hours later and ready to go for a full day of work. <laughs> I, nothing happened. I'm in bed for twelve days. <sighs> Recovering. I have no recovery at all. Like I'm just like I, I, I honestly like But some, Nathan Nathan's like boom. Yeah, Nathan, yeah, Nathan and uh, Mexico machine. <laughs> um, in terms of embarrassing stories for me, I mean there's there's, there's things I just can't I'm, not, uh, I'm really don't I don't think I know it's very public. Um I mean it's gonna be on social media. I, I just can't say. All right. Well, we'll we'll allow you to pass on, I will pass on that. Yeah. One question. Um, you're a guy of education, and I know that you you continue to learn every day. Um, right. and that you do some teaching as well, from what I from what I understood yeah. from your bio. 
As a student, though, was there a teacher that really stood out for you, either for a positive reason or a negative reason that you like to get off your chest? Mainly positive. And I think you you guys know some of these people. So um, what I've really liked about I would say there's there's three guys that really have stuck out to me. There's Ron Bender. I don't think I mean, he's, a, he's a dermatologist, Vince Bertucci and Sheetal Sapra, who's I think been on the show. Um, these guys were strong mentors for me because I think they have a, a very successful and um, thriving careers, but they've also have some balance. So they, a lot of these guys are family people. They have activities outside of work um, and they're able to maintain that balance. This, any job can be consuming as you guys probably can understand and especially this one, but I like that they're able to kind of balance everything. Well, as much as they can really. Uh, they've been able to balance things, and that I think is really important. And I think I, I think I saw that on your Instagram. I think you were hiking with Vince Bertucci, correct? Correct. Is that it? So Vince and I, yeah, we're good friends. He's that's like, amazing. Yeah. And for our viewers, you can follow Dr. Shukla on Instagram at it's right there on the screen at DRS underscore skincare, Dr. Skincare. And while we're at it, let's mention his Facebook page, Dr. Skincare Hamilton. And of course, you can go on LinkedIn for any professional questions at Raul Shukla to see what he performs in his clinic, both cosmetic and medically, or for booking a consultation with his team of experts. You can go to doctorsskincare.ca. It's a beautiful clinic. I've been there right from day. I think I was there during pre-construction. Yeah, you were. That's amazing. Wow. It's been years. Hey, like I keep forgetting how long it seems like it was five minutes ago. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Now to the good stuff. I get to ask some good questions. So <laughs> this is going to be good fun because uh, you're recently married. So congrats once again for that. Thank you. And um, talk to us a little bit about the wedding because it was, it was a COVID wedding, wasn't it? Yeah. Clearly it was different than the envision. Yeah. Uh, it actually became, I thought, we, we both thought it was, it actually ended up really being quite nice. Um, I feel like in a lot of wedding plannings, the weddings that I've been a part of where, you, where you're best man or you're involved heavily, you, f you forget about the point of it. Whereas in this wedding, the main part was the point and the extra stuff, like you just couldn't do, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it was in my parents' backyard. Um very low stress of just family. We have a reception plan for next year. If we'll see what happens. It was actually super nice. There were 10 people, um, which, you know, for weddings, super small and for an Indian wedding, ultra small uh, <laughs> or like a Greek wedding. I know they're huge too. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, it ended up being very nice because it, it was very intimate and personal. It was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I saw the photos like, well yeah. done. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So it's been a few months now. Uh huh. Who's who's wearing the pants in the relationship? So I feel like I wear the pants, but she definitely wears the skirt. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> pretty like she she runs the show. I would say for a lot of the a lot of the time at home, but I'm pretty laid back. Like she does much better than me th than I ever would. I think so. It's a good, uh, it's, she's, she does well in, in wearing the skirt. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Because uh, your wife is also a physician, isn't she? Yeah, she's an oncologist. Her days are very different. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I, I, can, I can imagine. <laughs> so so if you're a few months in. What do you think you're doing right now that's annoying the hell out of your wife? If there's oh, one not. thing. Oh, Pardon? No. Um, so she's ultra punctual, yeah. you know, for work, I'm fairly punctual, but everything else is kind of, you know, well, I'll give a range. I know and she hates it. Uh, I'm getting, I think better. I mean, I have to ask her in my opinion, I'm getting better with her. Um, but it's just some work to be done because she, she's very, uh, she's very organized. I feel like I'm organized, but not to her level, the, the punctuality. And I tend to leave things around the house a lot, like just everywhere scattered. I'm a little bit messy when it comes to my home life. And she's super organized, which is great for me. Yeah, you, 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 get, the, you get the good deal of, yeah. out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, how did you guys meet? Uh, it's an interesting story. So, uh, I was seeing a I had to go to the hospital. 
to see a patient. And then, you know, I was walking up and I saw this, I saw this like beautiful woman and I really tried to get to talk to her, but I just couldn't, she had left. But I kept note of the time. I'm like, okay, it's around 5.30, she finishes. Um, so I kept that in mind. So as desperate as this sounds, <laughs> I kept going back. Like, oh. Whoa! For a month, I did this. Wow! That's like Craigslist misconnections right there. Yeah. And you know, I probably should just download it. But anyway, um, <laughs> so every day, Monday, Tuesday, went. I'm like, what the hell? Like, where did she go? So roughly a month, I'm like, this is it. This is the last week. And on that last day, I saw her. I just went up to her. I'm like, look, I, without being creepy. Um, I saw it here a month. Yeah, like, where I've been sitting here for a whole month. Yeah. Actually, I'm just kidding. We both sweat, <laughs> right? Um, but that sounded, that first sounded way better. We met online. Oh, you met online? Okay. <laughs> you hit us. Are you totally just crapping on us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Like, like, well, that sounds that story sounds a lot better. <laughs> and, and uh and that's no no that's not fair i kind of fell in love with you <laughs> with your little toque in your mitt standing up yeah. at the hospital waiting I oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know, but oh like you swiped right that was it pretty much and she did too i didn't think much i mean i mean i don't know i don't know if either of you guys have had to go on there on online dating or not I, I was no, I was, I was done before online dating. I, I was meeting my wife as the online dating thing was kind of starting. So that was me sort of yeah, done. They always take the good ones. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so then they're left with us. But, um, but George, it's, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough outing on, online. It's, it's I a can imagine. different world, but you know what? It's the way it is today. Everybody's meeting online. Yeah. So, we both met, I and mean, she had met a lot of, like, we, we both had, you go in there with fairly low expectations. You, it's, you know, you um, you try to under-deliver or over-promise or over-deliver and under-promise, essentially. But it's a lot of, uh, it's um, it's a tough environment. And it, she, like, we just honestly, like, she seemed, like, nice when we on profile, and it just, it just kind of blossomed from there. So did you turn up to the first date knowing that you were going on a date with another doctor? I think so. Yes. Okay. So it was like you were turning up for like a doctor off pretty much. <laughs> like, I mean, on it, like usually if it's going to be a doctor off, it's pretty much a turn off. Cause like we both know what we do all day. Yeah. So, well, we talk about other stuff. I would hope. Um, so what was it like? Hey, are you a doctor? Yeah, I yeah, am. Me too. So want to meet up, get married, and never see each other for three years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was more... No, it was pretty, like... The first day, it was very relaxed. It just yeah. it felt... It, we, we connected right away. Um, I felt... I mean, she may disagree, but I think... I mean, she's married to me, so... <laughs> yeah. Something went right. So... Um, no, it's very relaxed environment. Uh, uh, like I think both of us were getting kind of fed up. You, I don't know how this went with you, George, but there's times where you go on and off, like you just need a break. And she was reaching that point. I was reaching that point. We're both in Hamilton at the time. I was used to going to Toronto. She met numerous people. I'm, uh, I'm sure. Well, I know. Um, and then we ended up connecting, and it, it, honestly, I think we're both in a convenient location. And our discussions were went well online, and then things blossomed. Really, listen. Okay. What, we need more of those success stories because a lot of people are in the. I think the online dating world is is taken over almost all dating more like more so than traditional dating because you know, right now everybody yeah. knows online, mm -hmm. and people need to hear more success stories. So I'm really happy it worked out for you guys. Thanks. Sorry to burst your bubble, though, but I felt, I felt like the first story sounded a lot better. I, th I think it's great that you just <laughs> set us up like that. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I don't think anybody's played us that bad. No. <laughs> Neither season. Like, I, I, I literally, I like, I, listen, my, my artistic side, I, I could have directed a whole movie. Yeah. Like, misconnections, you standing outside there just waiting for a month. 
Yeah, well, honestly, yeah you, you've got a career in acting after, <laughs> after you finish being a musician. Right now in acting, either I'll be a taxi guy, someone driving a taxi, or be a <laughs> That's the roles we get right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's that's where we are. I hope Hollywood is listening to the stereotype. <laughs> this is what you've created. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to become a movie star, do you work out? I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, I do, but uh, the results are you, aren't where are I need. you lying, Pinocchio? No, I do. I do. Honestly, I do. Okay. Tell movies. me the last song you worked out to. Last song, uh, I would say it was a Khaled song. Which one? Um, uh, man, what was the name of that song? Uh, Just sing uh, a little bit of it. No, no, no we can't. We <laughs> want people to follow, follow you, and not break their ears. Let me just look it up. Here. Oh, he's going on to Spotify now. Do you, know, yeah. do you know why you're on Spotify? You might as well uh, download all our episodes on Spotify as well. I, I definitely should. Uh, <laughs> the one I, what was it? It was uh, better. Oh, I better. like. Oh. Oh, nice song. Yeah. I, I, uh, go ahead. Are you a movie? Well, I know you're a movie person when you were growing up. Are you a movie person as an adult? Uh, yeah, especially COVID. Just watch movies all the time. Perfect. So, favorite movie you've seen during COVID? I think for me, the favorite movie would be. Um, can I say favorite series? TV series? Ozark. I wouldn't be a movie. I, I've been watching a ton of. Hey, tell me what you love about Ozark because I watched the first three episodes I couldn't get into it then I started watching I got to episode 8 then I was like kind of into it but then it wasn't really going do I need to go to like season 3 to love it I don't know I just, so for me that I like Narcos Ozark Breaking I mean I seem to like the genre of uh, money laundering and drugs okay yeah so <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> I seem to like that genre so it started a bit slow. I just got into the characters, honestly. Yeah. I feel like the lead character is very conflicted. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I just got into it. Okay. I, I, I mean, maybe it's not your scene, Jordan. I don't know what kind of stuff you like. No, I, like I love it. I think the character development is exceptional. But mm -hmm. I think I've gotten so used to binge watching that the storyline is not progressing fast enough in season one. I think that was it for me. Yeah, we, uh, what's it called? The uh, the one with the kids in the eighties. We finished that one. Um, Stranger Things. This is, this is us. Great. Stranger. This is a this is that's a tough one to watch. Just a tear. Oh man, I just oh, finished a brutal show. For, I just finished another season on uh, the l latest season on Netflix, and look. Well, oh man, that, that's a that's a tear jerk. I, I almost I feel like I've I've done a workout after watching a couple of episodes because you you're so tensed up, like waiting for the sad thing to happen. Emotionally, it's a uh, it's draining. I mean, good for the producer. They did a great job. Like I like, you know, I like a lot of comedies. Like old school is something that uh, I mean, it's not a high thought provoking comedy, but like it, it does the job. I, I feel like very relaxed when I watch it. So it's a funny movie to me. If I were to make a TV series about you and your life, um, what actor would you choose to play you? I, I like um, most Leonardo DiCaprio movies I like. Um, I mean... He's the man. He, I mean, he looks way better than me, so that uh, would be great. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, the, the most... Uh, not quite great, but... From Blood Diamond to Departed, like most of his movies, I really, I've really enjoyed. He's yeah. an exceptional actor. Shutter Island, we watched. We, actually, Shutter Island during COVID, we watched. I, I really liked it. Catch yeah. Me If You Can is good. Actually, like, there's so many. Like yeah. he's a great. Is great. it the beach? Is it the beach? The one in Thailand? That was oh. that one. Of the beach. Yeah. And and while while your wife is out walking the dog, who would play your co-star? Oh, there's. I mean, there's. There's just for many potentials, I think here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is taking a trip down memory lane, yeah. Yeah. As well as sign up for it. Um, she's actually home now. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, then moving on. Look, you just got saved twice in one night. No very story. No, no imaginative co-star. Wait till we get to the quick fire questions. You're screwed. 
I suppose I suppose we should talk some work then. Mm-hmm. Sure, a little bit. Just that we'll, we'll just we'll just touch a little bit. But um, this is a question we ask all guests, and I love the answers because we get some pretty fantastic answers. But I think this question is is really really important, especially for those watching this show who have a certain stigma about our industry, which I don't like. Um, what makes our industry so great, in your opinion? I think it is the people. So the patients, the uh, industry partners, your colleagues, it's a, it's a great group of people um, who are interested in promoting the well-being of someone, whether it be um, a medical ailment or and, and often in this part of the job is more a physical ailment. But that really connects, I think, to the emotional part of the um, of the patient or person. And the, just the people in it, my colleagues and like guys like you are just really great people. I feel very fortunate that I got to m- meet all these people, honestly. Awesome. And just because you're a young, young up and coming, well, I wouldn't say up and coming, like you're, you're doing it, like you're in the middle of your, your prime and so successful at the moment. Um, has there been like a setback in your career that uh, you've learned a lot from and, and that you would like to share with us today? Um, yeah, I think so. Like, you know, a lot of the times you feel as though you have some control over things. But, but often you really don't, and you have to adjust and pivot to what comes to you. Like COVID's an example. But uh, I, when I first started, I was in a, I would say, a rustic environment. George, I first met you there. Um, I was in a small clinic, and then I eventually bought my own place, uh, built out the clinic. But a lot of the plans I had, the timelines I had, like you're dealing with cities and permits, it's there's almost very little up to you. You can plan as much as you want, but you really need to pivot um, and make adjustments as things come. Like I think you guys have experienced that to an extent, but that's where I know for me, I all make plans, but I know to have a plan essentially when the plan doesn't work out. Like there's things that don't go your way, audibles, things you can't predict, and then you just adjust, take it with what it is, learn from it and move on. Staffing is always is always a tough thing in our industry because finding good staff, keeping good staff, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of turnaround both on both in in the clinic side, but even in the in the rep side that we were in for a long time. Oh. So I know you've had a lot of your staff for quite a long time, a lot, mm-hmm. at least the last little while, considering how long you've been open. Yeah. And if I were to ask them to tell me one positive thing about you, what would they say? And one negative thing about you. What would they say? So positive that I think I think they know that I care about them quite a bit. I mean, we've got a small number of staff, and I feel I hope that comes across. Uh, n- negative, I may seem distracted when they talk to me, uh, partly because I am. Usually, there's ten things coming at once. Yeah. You, the girls will review something and they say a whole spiel. I'm like, I heard nothing you said. Can you say that again? And I, like, please don't be offended. I'm trying to get but like paying attention to someone and just staying focused on that. It's very important. I'm trying to do that better, like keeping your phone away. But when there's multiple things coming at once, um, I know that's not it's it's not nice for someone to experience that. But I I mean not that it makes it better, but I'll say that in front of them. I'm like, look, I, I know you, what you're saying is important. I was totally distracted, so I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. yeah. True enough. You, when I first saw you building your clinic, there was a, there was an empty basement. And I don't know since then if it's been filled, because I haven't been there for about a year and a half now. And because of COVID, we couldn't yeah. get there. But you were planning on doing some clinical trials. Can you give me some insight into what that space has become, if anything? And have you started any clinical trials that I'm allowed to know about? Um, that's affectionately known as the dungeon by my staff. <laughs> <laughs> they, they hate that room. Wow. No, so I really have tried to develop that area, but it's a tough, it's a tough space. And deal, like dealing with the city, per, like kind of what you guys were alluding to before, um, dealing with administration and um, infrastructure that's kind of beyond your means. It's been a challenge, I would say, to the least. Um, 
So right now that's on a standstill. But yeah, clinical trials we've been starting. Um, I do some psoriasis ones where people have skin issues, new drug come to the market. So we've started doing that. Um, but that is kind of in its infancy. Like my wife will join me with that. Um, she, in the oncology world, there's a lot of that. And she has, I mean, she's, she's a pro at it. So she's right. going to probably joining. So in the cosmetic side or even no not even the cosmetic side in the dermatology side let's say like that because i don't really i don't like to divide medical with cosmetic i think health, right. health and well-being should be all in one category mm -hmm. tell me what you believe the next big innovation or next big thing that's coming out that's really going to revolutionize um health and well-being of skin i think artificial intelligence is a, it's kind of already started i think but I feel like in the next 10 years, uh, for instance, the injectables and skincare, I feel as though there's going to be technology. I think there's some that are already kind of on preliminary stages where they kind of assess and measure angles and deficiencies and just they'll inject or deliver what is maybe lacking to pro probably give you a better uh, skin health and aesthetic. I think that's eventually coming. I'm already in the body contouring world, there's hands-free devices. That, I mean, the next step is just going to be, I feel like, focusing on areas that are troublesome for people and just really targeting to it. I think a lot of us will be managing these machines, essentially artificial intelligence, at least in my opinion. Awesome. I look forward to it. <laughs> It's, it's funny you should say that because uh, a guest of ours, Dr. Sandy scott Nicky, said the same thing. She thinks AI is going to be the next the next game changer in the industry. And I think it's a, like a lot of people don't like that idea because they feel like they're going to be replaced. I think things are just going to be adjusted. Yeah. You have to kind of keep up to speed with the changes that happen in the industry and find a way to kind of work together with it. Well, she had a good point as well. She sort of said that like people may not like it, but it's better to get on board and have – uh, specialists being involved in the, the the evolution of the change, so it's done well. Then fight against it because I think it's a it's a reality that it's coming. Yeah, you can't you can't stop it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So um, I want to talk about this. I think this is really important because you being a, a young male, um, and young males, we're very poor when it comes to talking to one one another about our feelings and stuff and mm -hmm. we're going through COVID at the moment and mental health and anxiety is at an all-time high sure. um have you ex experienced a stage in your life where you've gone through any like mental health situations or anxiety yourself or someone close to you well so i grew up in a house with two psychiatrists so keep that in mind uh wow. so mental health was um Oh, well, my brother's a psychiatrist, my dad is. But uh, going through, like, the challenge of taking on, like, doing a, building a clinic uh, with really no experience, and you learn along the way a lot of deadlines and stress. There's a lot of stress and anxiety, like, did I take on too much? Yeah. And there's times where I come home where I'm like, well, this is, you know, running a regular clinic, just dealing with life, the issues that come up. Um there's times where I'm like, maybe I just took on too much and the stress would be um, sometimes overwhelming, but I use that as a motivational, I mean, at times, like, at times it was just tough. You just, you, it's not much you can do, but you try to learn from it. And, you know, I've gone through it and thankfully it, things went well. Um, it's something that helped me grow, but during it, the stress was a, um, a big issue. Uh, like, it, it was something that was on my mind because I didn't, I didn't really know how things would pan out. I had deadlines that I didn't really know I could control or meet. There was a lot of adjustments, but it ended up working out well. But stress was a big one, and I tried to use it as a motivational kind of force for me because I didn't really know what else to do. Like crying doesn't really help. No, this is so, so true. And so, so on that note, uh, your young, you meet your younger self. So, resident doctor. Mm -hmm meets you today what would be the one piece of advice you would you would give yourself if if you're able to go back and and give yourself some advice i i i would say essentially that you know all you can try your best in essentially all you can expect from yourself is 
your best effort, the outcome is sometimes not up to you. And whatever happens, you deal with it. If you don't like it, you try to make adjustments. But you can't really change your outcome. You can only control your effort, really. That's what I would say, really. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Mr. Mr. Dr. Raul Shukla, you've made it through the interview all the way to one of our favorite parts. The quick fire question. <laughs> and he's got no passes. No passes. Now, the thing is, we've been really good to everyone, and we allow one pass. But we're not going to be good to you today because you pulled that little hospital, poor me, waiting for yeah. a month. On you it. burnt your pass. <laughs> you, you burnt it. You, you burnt your pass. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. What's your favorite thing in your closet right now? Uh, this blue shirt. Do you floss or do you floss and brush your teeth or just brush? Floss always. Good boy. What's your guilty food pleasure? Pizza. And dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Sour candies or ice cream? Ice cream. If you could be from any other decade or area era, which would it be? Uh, I'd say disco. Disco, 70s, it's late 70s. 70s, cool. Yeah. Uh, your house is on fire, your wife and dog are safe. What two things do you run back in and get? Passport, computer. Okay, iPhone or Android? iPhone. Any tattoos? Not yet. If you, ooh. ooh. If you had a tattoo, where would you put it? Uh, I would say hip. Okay. Are you going to show us? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, if uh, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Um, superpower would be, I guess, what's a what's Professor X, the X Men guy? What does he do? Mind reader. Yeah. Sure, mind reader. I don't know if I want, that, but yeah, okay, I'll say mind reader. All right. Uh, do you prefer texting or talking? I like talking. Oh, and I always text you. Three <laughs> <laughs> times is texting. Because <laughs> uh, when I call you to answer the phone, no, it's <laughs> uh, You can either speak every language in the entire world or communicate perfectly with your dog. Oh. Okay, I'll take, I'm going to take the world. I feel like my dog and I are good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your ultimate best friend would be Beyonce or Rihanna. Beyonce. And white or whole wheat? Ooh. Wait. You have to have dinner with Justin Trudeau or Donald Trump. Trudeau. <laughs> French fries or potato chips? French fries. Oh, wait, no. chips, 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 chips. Chips, Sorry. chips, chips. Okay. Uh, weights or cardio? <sighs> okay, let's do. Weights. Or not cardio, it's cardio. Okay. Um, sex or pizza? Both. <laughs> no, <laughs> at, at the same time. <laughs> You're going to the dermatology event of the year as vice president of Cloud. <laughs> okay. Who's the designer dressing you? I like Gucci. Okay. Dream vacation spot. Um, you know, I really like Thailand. Yeah. A place you haven't traveled to, but it's on your bucket list. Vietnam. Uh, you can only take one person to class with you as your date, Nathan or me. Oh, I'm going to do George only because I know him longer. Oh! That's the only reason. Oh! He drunk in Mexico, and you won't remember being there, Nathan. <laughs> oh. That's the only reason, Nathan. It's just his. You know what? I do want you to. I want to know. I want you to know this, Nathan. When it came to dark chocolate and milk chocolate, he said both. Yes, he said, yeah. pizza, he said both. When it came to you and me, he both. dropped pizza like this. It was oh, crazy. look at it! Look at him! Look at him rubbing it in now. He, you know, oh, no, that's... I'm just the lead singer rubbing it into the drummer in the corner. <laughs> You'd be happy I have your mic on, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, as cheesy as it's going to sound, what I'm going to say, because I usually have a nice big thank you to say to everybody at the end of the episode, and I'm going to thank you, but more so than that, I really want to say, and I know this sounds weird, 
but I'm really, really proud of you. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. So I think much. I've known you long enough to see the the growth, the changes, the struggles to the success, yeah. to everything that's developed and thank how you. your life is unfolding both professionally and personally. And I'm really proud of you. And thank you for spending the time and being here today. Um, thank you for having me. It's honestly an honor hanging out with you because I know how busy you are. And um, it's great. Thank I can't you. wait to see you in person again. Okay. Thanks, guys. No worries. And I've got two questions before you go. You okay. can't get away I'm without telling us how you have such great skin. What's your skincare routine at the moment? It's pretty basic, man. Vitamin C, uh, sunscreen, and retinol. Like, there's nothing. And gen- I, I give it to my mom, I guess. Genetics. But the other three, like the other three big killers, right? Like the three main yeah. weapons. Yeah. Like I try, like all my buddies are like, it's it's funny. Like all my buddies now who would never touch what I'm doing for work and now coming to me, you know, Nathan, I'm starting to look a bit tired and older. What should I be using? And I'm just like, yeah, it's pretty simple, man. Vitamin C, retinol and sunscreen. Of course. Yeah. No, for, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And the last question before we uh, we wrap it up tonight, who would you like to see on the show next? Hmm, who should come next? You should get Vince Bertucci on here. Okay, can you help us with that? I can try. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you, so, thank you so much, mate. It's uh, it's been a no, pleasure yeah. having you on the show. It's uh, you're an absolute legend, and uh, we, I can't wait to catch up with you for a beer after uh, this second yeah. lockdown. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Stay backstage. Right. We're just going to go to a message from our sponsor. We're going to say goodnight to all our viewers, and we'll be right back. But for those of you that are watching, make sure you head over to Instagram and follow Dr. Shukla and his team of experts at DRS Doctors underscore skincare. Also, go to drskincare.ca. See the full gamut of what they offer, what they can do for you, and book a consultation today if you're in the Hamilton area. Or outside the Hamilton area. It's worth the drive. Trust me. On Facebook, Dr. Skincare Hamilton. And of course, on LinkedIn for all professional questions, at Raul Shukla. Thank you once again for being here. We're going to go to a quick message from our sponsors, and I'll be right back to see you all off. Thank you. So what an honor to have Dr. Raul Shukla on the show. As both him and I mentioned, we've worked together for quite a long time now, and I I have seen his development professionally. And to be able to hear that he's gotten married, I also get to learn of his development personally um, in his life. And it's, it's quite amazing to see people you know and where their life takes them and how life leads them through different paths and different changes. And... You know, I can't help but reflect on something you said at the beginning of the show, that we've had some pretty big names on here. I want to make it clear to everybody watching, every single person we've had on the show, whether they're a doctor, a nurse, a plastic surgeon, a dermatologist, an industry person, somebody that is a sales rep, somebody that is a janitor in any of the businesses we have had on, they're a big deal. They are here because they're exceptional at what they do. And that is not measured by how many followers they may have on Instagram or social media or TikTok. Stuff that we we get proud of when we see somebody may have, you know, 300,000 followers or somebody may get 30,000 views on a video of theirs. We get proud and excited because imagine training your whole life to become a doctor, whether whatever that specialty is, and you treat people and you save lives and you do things like skin cancer. And, you know, you do these surgeries where you cut people open and you literally put them back together. And you're getting recognized for that like you're some sort of movie star. That's amazing. But the amount of recognition you get from general public that is not your client does not make you an exceptional person. It's how you give back and the way you treat your staff and what you do at your job every day for all those people that we never get to meet on skin interviews, which are the patient stories. But if you go to a lot of these websites, when many times we say, go check out this person's website or go check out their Instagram or go check out their Facebook or LinkedIn, 
when you go to these social media sites or when you go search them on a Google search, you're able to look at the reviews. And those are the patient stories that really talk about who these people are. And when you take the time to research and find the right person for you based on maybe what you learn on skin interviews, but also what patients have seen, then you're going to make a connection with some of these people that is for life. We've done that through skin interviews. I feel in many ways that I may have that type of connection with Dr. Shukla. He may feel otherwise, but I did stand outside the hospital and wait for him every day for a month. And now he's on skin interviews season two. All jokes aside, I loved the one thing he really said that you got to have an attitude of gratitude. Carry it with you every day. Every single one of our guests brings up gratitude. And I love how simply you put that. It's an attitude of gratitude. And I've got one for all of you that take the time to watch our episodes and make it to the end of the episode because they're not short. They're quite long. And for those of you that don't get a chance to watch and are taking the time to listen through podcasts, which is on Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple, thank you very much. A massive thank you again to Fullscript for sponsoring all of season two. And in case you ever forget, take care of your skin. I'll find out, and you know what'll happen. I'll kick your butt. Have a lovely evening, day, no matter what time it is. Take care of yourself.